Hey, good morning, HIU. Hope you guys are doing well this morning. Have some coffee, ready to enjoy this online chapel. We know that for many of you guys, you're in the thick of this semester at this point. You got a lot of studying going on. We want you to know that we are praying for you guys, and we want to make sure that you're also staying connected. For those of you who are on campus, that might look like getting plugged into a MERS, which happens every Tuesday night at 8. Uh, for the sports teams, we've been praying towards this end. We're so excited that you guys have been able to start practicing together and hope that you're enjoying connecting with your team. This morning, we're going to have a time of worship, and then you're going to hear from my friend and our men's resident director. You guys all know him, Stephen Cobb. He's going to bring God's word this morning, so enjoy. Father, I just want to come before you. I want to come before you and just lift you up for the good things that you've done. I think we're all struggling right now to see where you are. in the midst of all of this. I feel like we're struggling to hear your voice, to know that this is exactly where we're supposed to be. Because we're, we're in the hard times. We're grieving. We're grieving the loss of community. We're grieving going to class. We're grieving saying hi to our friends on campus. We're grieving a new start that we were wanting, that fresh start at the beginning of the year. We're grieving all of these things that we placed our hopes in because we placed our identity in some of them. We said, if, that, if things go back to normal, I will be happy. But God, honestly, we just missed you. We forget that maybe this was a time that was created for space. We're not taking advantage of the opportunities that we have to reach out to the ones that we love. We're just sitting here in loneliness. But God, it's because we miss you and we're not reaching out to you. And that's not how it should be. Lord, I want you to be the one that I go to when I'm hurting. Lord, I want you to be the one that I go to when I'm grieving. When I'm stuck, when I'm lonely. Because I, I want you to be the one that I go to in all those things. Because, Lord, your goodness and your faithfulness is better and more pure than anything that we could ever have. Your goodness 
and your faithfulness is better than being able to go to our classes in person. It's better than being able to high five the people that we see on campus. Your goodness is better than any earthly desire that we could ever have. Lord, let you be my comfort. Let me rely on you. Help us to know that you are better. Jesus, we love you. In your name, amen. And I've searched the world But it couldn't fill me A man's empty praise And treasures that vain Are never enough And you came along And put me back together And every desire is now satisfied here in your love. Oh, there's nothing better than you. Oh, there's nothing better than you. Oh, there's nothing, nothing is better. Oh, there's
better than you. Oh, there's nothing, nothing is better than you. Hey, HIU, Stephen Kopp here. Stoked to be with y'all today, wherever here is on the other side of the camera. A couple quick facts about me before we hop in. Um, I was a student here at Hope for four years, um, and now I'm going on my second year as the men's resident director here. Um, I was born in Australia. I absolutely love the place, um, but I know nothing about it because um, we moved when I was about one years old. Me and my family were actually going to go back this summer for this awesome trip that we've been planning my whole life and uh, 2020. Um, I, I love food. I admittedly spend way too much money um, on food, but I love California, LA, and trying all of the different food spots that it has. Speaking of, if you know any and want to give me any recommendations, I would love to hear it. Um, my email is slcop at hiu.edu. Um, go ahead and shoot them my way. I'll let you know. I'll give you a review. Um, but I'm always looking for more food places to try. And lastly, I, I love sports. Um, so I don't know about you, but, but if you love a sports team, if you're a diehard fan, put in our YouTube chat. Let us know who you like, who you're rooting for, um, and let's see if anybody else likes the same team as you, um, or maybe some enemies will be made in the YouTube chat. But for me, I'm a diehard Philadelphia Eagles football fan. Um, and if you don't know, we've already started out 0-2, um, so our season's looking really, really strong. Um, I also love the Phoenix Suns. I'm from Arizona originally. I love Devin Booker, I mean, we went undefeated in the NBA bubble, but we still missed playoffs for the ninth consecutive year now. So that's what it's like being a sports fan for Steven. Um, also, any readers in the audience, anybody a reader, um, not just reading because you have to for school, but like authentically liking to read. Maybe you read a book for fun, um, you read the whole Harry Potter series, whatever it is. Um, yeah, if I got you excited, that, that's not me. Um, I had a friend that's been trying to get me to read Harry Potter um, for about six years now, um, and I barely made it through one book. Um, but I say that because I'm totally the type to say, man, I, I, need to, I need to start reading more. Or, oh, that's a good book. I, I should read it. I really want to. Um, my 2020 quote has been, I'm trying to get into reading. Um, however, it's not, not going very well. Um, and worst of all, I keep buying all these books on Amazon thinking it's going to make me read, um, but they just end up on my bookshelf and I waste money that I could have spent trying new food. Um, so 2020 has been a real big struggle for me, but I ask if you are a reader because the one book that I have managed to crack open um, during this season is called The Ragamuffin Gospel by Brendan Manning. Um, and in it, he shares this awesome story that I want to paraphrase for you today. And he shares this story about a man and he goes and sees a doctor and he tells the doctor, man, I've got this throbbing headache, doctor. C can you give me just some medicine? Take it all away. And the doctor says, uh, of course, but let me ask you a couple questions first. And the doctor asks first, he says, do you ever, do you ever drink any liquor? And the man says, liquor? Ew, I would, I've never drink that stuff. That stuff is nasty. So the doctor puts a note down. The doctor asks, do, do you ever use tobacco? The man says, Psh. That stuff is disgusting. I would never. And the doctor asks one more question. He's a little more embarrassed to ask this one, but the doctor asks, do you ever, do you ever run in about at night? Do you ever kind of do things like that that you shouldn't? And the man looks at the doctor, I'm almost, almost offended, but he tells the doctor, oh, I would never. He said, I'm in bed by 10 o'clock at the latest every night. And the doctor asks one last question. He says, is the, is the pain stinging? Is it just poking into your head? And the man says, yes. And the doctor laughs. And he says, friend, I know what your problem is. Your halo is on way too tight. And, and I love that story. And the story ends by talking about all of us have these ideals that we want to try so hard to live up to. But the truth is, is if we lived up to every single ideal that we have for ourselves in our lives, our lives would be unlivable. We would never be able to. And I love the ending quote, and the author writes, the tilted halo of the saved sinner is worn loosely and with easy grace. Another way to say it 
is how beautiful it is to be loved by a Savior who knows that we're a sinner. So let me ask you, do you have a headache? Where's your headache coming from today or this past month or this past year, this past semester? Maybe it's coming from productivity. Maybe you've been banging your head against the wall because no matter how hard you try with remote learning or with work or with anything that you're doing, with sports, any of that stuff, you feel like you haven't been able to be as productive as you want to be. Gyms have been closed. Maybe remote learning isn't the same as being in class and on Zoom you're scared to ask the question and so you leave class with a lot of questions. Which side note on that, I promise your teacher wants to talk to you. Reach out to them. They would love to chat. But maybe your headache's coming from constantly wanting to control such an uncertain future. And you make all these plans and you think that you have your life all set back into a routine only for it to get thrown off by something. Maybe you're the opposite. Maybe you don't have a calendar. You're, you're not the control person. Maybe you got COVID brain and you've been forgetting all of these important things that you should be doing. You forgot to wake up for class. Maybe you woke up late for chapel today. I'm glad you're here. But whatever it is, we, we all got headaches coming from somewhere. I know one that I've seen a lot, one that I've experienced a lot. It's trying to live up to the expectations of others. And I don't know who it is for you. Maybe it's friends, family, sports team, brother, sister, a teacher, a boss. But trying to live up to the expectations that everybody else have for me. And, and I feel like I'm going to let them down if I'm not enough. Or if I drop the ball, that then I'm not good enough. I just want you to know, I'm a fellow struggler talking to you today. But my question today for you is, do you have a headache? Where is it coming from? And I love, I love the Bible because it's full of so many characters um, that, that I, I relate to a bunch. Um, and one of the most, or one that I relate to the most, is Peter. And what I love about a story that we're going to read today in Luke 5 is it shows that, that he understands the struggle. He understands what it is to fall short. He understands what it is to be a sinner, to not be good enough, to not be able to keep your head above the water at times. And so let's read from, from Luke 5 today. And it says, One day as Jesus was standing by the Sea of Galilee, with the people crowding around him and listening to the word of God, he saw at the water's edge two boats left there by the fishermen who were washing their nets. And he got into one of the boats, the one belonging to Simon Peter, and asked him to put out a little from shore. And then he sat down and he taught the people from the boat. Here's the important part. Watch this. When he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, put out in the deep water and let down the nets for a catch. Simon answered, Master, we worked hard all night and haven't caught anything. But because you say so, I'll let down the net. And, and let, let's pause right there. Now, I'm no fisherman by any means. Um, and I, I know Dr. Alexander or Dr. Coma would know a lot more than me. But I feel like if you've been fishing all night long and you haven't caught a fish, you're probably not the best fisherman. <laughs> I'm joking, of course. I know we all, have, we all have bad days. But I loved this show, Deadliest Catch, growing up. I loved watching it. And I can promise you, I didn't watch it to see how little they would catch. I watched it because every single season, Sig Hansen, he's the captain of the Northwestern, it seemed like they always pulled in the most crab. And I was absolutely mind blown at how productive they were. But anyway, has 2020 ever left you feeling like Peter? <clears throat> like you worked all night or all day and you're tired and you're exhausted, but you feel like nothing came of the work. You feel like you caught no fish. Let's keep reading. And when they had done so, they caught such a large number of fish that their nets began to break. So they signaled their partners in the other boat to come and help them. And they came and filled the boat so full that they began to sink. And when Peter saw this, he fell at Jesus' knees and said, go away from me, Lord. I'm a sinful man. Ever shared the same thought as Peter? I'm a sinful man. Maybe, maybe the quote or the thought in your head was, but God, I'm just not good enough. 
but God, God, I know you'll love me if I just try harder. Or God, sorry, sorry I'm such a disappointment, God. Sorry I'm not good enough to be around you, God. Do you ever believe that lie? I have. And Peter didn't think that, that he could come to God, that he could come to Jesus empty-handed as a sinner, someone who was broken and hurting. He, he didn't know how to come to God empty-handed. But Jesus offers Peter a different life. We keep reading. For he and all his companions were astonished at the catch of the fish that they had taken. And so were James and John, the son of Zebedee, Simon's partners. And then Jesus said to Simon, catch this part, don't be afraid, from now on you will catch men. So they pulled their boats up to shore, left everything and followed him. And Jesus looks at Peter in this baller way that only Jesus can do with the confidence that he has. But he looks at Peter and basically says, Peter, I'm not going anywhere. I, I know you're a sinner. I know exactly who you are. And I want to do life with you. And Peter learns what truly matters isn't the amount of hours that we spend trying hard to be better, to do more, to live up to the expectations of others, to be good enough. But what matters a whole lot more than that is coming to Jesus empty-handed and letting his grace be enough for us. Letting him tell us that, that we're loved, that he cares about us, that it's not about our performance always. And that's awesome, right? We think Peter walked away, his life completely changed, he never had another problem. Jesus just completely changed it. But, spoiler alert, just a few years later, Jesus is going, he's going to be crucified. Hey, he's going to die for the forgiveness of everybody's sins, but, but Peter doesn't fully know this yet. And so he watches as, as one of his best friends, as his mentor for the past three years, is, ab is about to die. Peter's about to lose him. And, and worse yet, in the moment when Jesus could, could use support more than anything else, Peter denied him three times. And Peter knows that Jesus knows about it. And the second story we're going to read today, Peter doesn't realize that, that Jesus rose again three days later, that Jesus is back, that he's greater than that. But let's read what Peter's reaction is when he, when he thinks his, his friend, his mentor, his savior has died. And the story is in John 21. John 21, 1, and it shares, Afterwards, Jesus appeared again to his disciples by the Sea of Galilee, and it happened this way. Simon Peter, Thomas, Nathaniel from Canaan and Galilee, the sons of Zebedee, and two other disciples were together. I'm going out to fish, Simon Peter told them. And they said, we'll go, we'll go with you. So they went out and got onto the boat. But that night they caught nothing. Sounds a bit familiar, right? The Sea of Galilee, they're fishing. They go out and yet they catch nothing. And Peter went right back to the life that he knew before he met Jesus. The life that, that you and I know all, all too well. The life of try harder, do more, be better, be good enough, never fail, never drop the ball. Don't miss that last shot. When it's your opportunity, you have to take it. You can't miss. You can never fall short. And if you do, don't let anybody see. Put on the fake smile. But let's see what happens when Peter is reminded of Jesus and his love when he remembers that when he gets to see that Jesus is still alive. And he says, early in the morning, Jesus stood on the shore, but the disciples did not realize that it was Jesus. He called out to them, friends, haven't you any fish? No, they answered. He said, throw your net onto the right side of the boat and you will find some. And when they did, they were unable to haul in the net because the, because the large number of fish. And then the disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, it's the Lord. And as soon as Simon Peter heard him say, it's the Lord, he wrapped his outer garment around him, for he had taken it off, and jumped into the water. The other disciples followed in the boat, towing the net full of fish, for they were not far from shore, about a hundred yards. Look at his reaction this time when he sees Jesus once again. Peter remembers what truly matters in life. And he dives into the water and swims a hundred yards just to be with Jesus. 
and he dove after Jesus because Peter learned from last time. The amount of fish that I have in my boat doesn't matter. Jesus can take care of that in a snap. It's not about me trying harder, being better, always living a perfect life. But Peter learned that he could come to Jesus, that he could dive into the water to meet Jesus, even when he wasn't good, even when he was broken, even when he was hurting, even when he didn't feel like enough, Jesus was still there. Peter learned that he could come to Jesus a tired sinner and he would still find grace and love and rest. Peter learned the truth of the statement that we talked about earlier of how beautiful it is to be loved by a Savior who knows that we're sinners. And this is a secret that the world is never going to tell you because we all have two options in life. The first, we can fight with everything that we have to be good enough. To prove our worth, to be valued, to show that we're deserving, to give everything we have to keep our head above the water. But as any little kid knows, or finds out brutally fast for the first time, when you hop into the deep end, right? We're human. We cramp, we get tired. The waves can be really, really big sometimes. And sometimes this life hits hard. And we live long enough to learn that, that when life hits hard, sometimes we don't always have the power to hit back. And sometimes we need to be reminded, like little kids when they hop in the water for the first time, that we don't always have to be able to swim on our own. So the second option, and thank God that there's a second option, is we admit that we're not enough. And we stop trying so dang hard. We realize just how beautiful it is to be loved by a Savior who knows we're a sinner. And we realize that, that all Jesus asks is, is that we come to Him, that we experience His grace, that we realize that He loves us. And, and this picture looks a lot more like floating in the midst of a crazy ocean because we have Jesus' grace. It's, it's not about us trying harder to stay afloat, but, but we have Jesus, and it's, it's relying on that. Maybe, maybe you've never heard about this love or this grace option, that, that there's a Jesus, that there's a Savior who's willing to take you in just as you are. And if you haven't, let me tell you, I promise you, there's so much freedom in it in life. And maybe you have, and you're like, Stephen, we've heard this a million times. We're, we're in 10 Bible classes. We, we, we've heard it a bunch. But maybe you're like Peter or like me, and you forget so often. You remember it in here, but you forget it right here that we have a Savior who knows that we're a sinner and loves us so, so much still. That as a follower of Christ, you don't need to keep trying to act like you're perfect, but we get the blessing of getting to live a life forgiven if we choose to admit that we're flawed. So why does all this matter? What's the point of all this, Stephen? Is this even going to change my life? I'm glad you asked. Great questions. And we'll end with, with two things that we can do. How this can change our right here and our right now. And first, I want all of us today, wherever you're at, hold out your hands. I can't see, so I'm trusting that you guys are going to do this with me. Hold out your hands and let's close our eyes. And as we close our eyes, Think about everything in life that, that's building up, that, that's making you tired, that's making you exhausted. Well, what is it that's causing your headache today? And as you think about that, slowly let, let your hands come together and grasp tight. Slowly let yourself squeeze tighter as you think about how hard you're trying, about the expectations you're trying to live up to. Maybe the anxiety or the depression or the loneliness that, that you're trying to hide and act like you're okay. Or the fact that you're struggling in school and you don't really know who to say or who to tell. And as you think about all these things, keep squeezing tighter. Maybe, maybe finances are tough and you don't want anybody to know. And maybe, maybe living at home with family this, the, the past season has been way more difficult than you want to let people know. Whatever it is, keep squeezing tight. And in a second, we're going to release and as we release our hands, I want you to picture yourself just dropping all of those struggles, all the anxiety, and, and coming to Jesus empty-handed. 
Keep your eyes closed and hear him say your name. Hear him call you a son or a daughter and tell you how much he loves you, how proud of you he is, and that in you he's well pleased. Let's release our hands. Release the struggles. And hear Jesus just say that he loves you, that he's proud of you, that he knows that you're trying in this season, and that's okay. And second, I want you to imagine with me a different reality for 2020. For right now, for our sports teams, for HIU, for the community as a whole, maybe for your family, for your friends. Imagine a community where the fake smiles behind the I'm doing okay or I'm doing good fall. A community where people walking around are overwhelmed with things inside their brain that they're not telling anybody else. A community where it's okay to be broken, to have hurts, to not have life figured out. A community where it's okay to reach out for help if you're struggling in school or in life or personally. A community where you're applauded for accepting help. It's not seen as a sign of weakness but strength in being together and in support. So today, if you're at your end, if you're tired and you need extra strength to keep going, please reach out or let the walls come down when someone reaches out to you. Maybe it's a friend, a family member. Reach out to your academic advisor, your coach. You might get a call from someone at Hope just checking in on how you're doing. Let them know how you are. We want to be able to support you guys in this season. And I know for me, I need all the support I can get. And also, so today, if, if you're at your end, if you're, if you're done trying so hard to be enough, I want to encourage you, reach out to somebody. Let the walls fall down for five minutes. Talk to a friend, a family member, a coach, a teammate, one of your academic advisors here at Hope. Reach out to the Hope Counseling Center if you want. Somebody from Hope might even give you a call in the, couple, in the coming weeks. Let us know how you're doing. Let the walls fall down for five minutes and know that it is okay to not be okay, to not be perfect, for your life to not be completely figured out. And as you let down those walls, I want to join you in realizing the truth that, that I've needed so much of how beautiful it is to be loved by a Savior who, who knows that we're sinners. I'm so glad to be here with y'all today, HIU. Hope the rest of your day goes well. Blessings.